which I'm posting. So let us start with today's lesson. So let us see what are the learning objectives of today's lesson. So uh, at the end of this lesson, we will be knowing about what is classification, what are the basis of classification. We will know about the hierarchy in the classification of groups and we will know what is nomenclature, what is binomial nomenclature and how we are naming the scientific organisms. Now this five kingdom classification, I'll uh, get into details in the next video, but in this video, we'll just do a quick uh, recap of all the uh, things we have done in uh, seven standard also we have done this classification right we will do a quick recap of that but the detailing of five kingdom classification will be in the next video so let us start with today's uh, lesson now what does this term classification means now this term classification is actually it is meaning that identifying uh, the similarities and the differences of different kinds of organisms and then placing with similar characteristics in one group and different characteristics in different group. So that is called the classification. So we can say that this phylogenetic classification was first uh, proposed by Carl Linnaeus in 1735. Now, how we can, with this example, how we can say this classification to understand classification, we can take a um, example which is very easy or a simple. Now, let us take one example. We have a basket full of different kinds of fruits. Now, in this basket, if you are uh, told to separate those kinds of fruits, what you will do? You will separate the apples and keep it in a separate place, the grapes in separate place, oranges in separate place, and bananas in separate one. So, what are these? Then you are placing uh, the uh, group of uh, fruits according to their appearances that is similarities and differences so this is how you are classifying the different fruits into different categories like apple uh, banana uh, grapes oranges etc so like this only we are classifying the plants and animals also into different groups now this phylogenetic classification was done by Carl Linnaeus in 1735 now we are to know a few uh, definitions, a few important things like systematics. So what is systematics? It is the study of kinds and diversity of organisms and the evolutionary relationships among them is known as systematics. So this all terms are being invented from the Greek word that is systema means system and icos means the body fact. Is it clear? Now next comes what is taxonomy. Now taxonomy, this taxis word means arrangement. So and taxonomy means that is uh, we can say that this arrangement or taxonomy and L that is the uh, nominal is which is belonging to a genome. So this one is Greek and this one L is the it is the Latin word that is nominal is what what it means. This means the belonging to a group. So is it clear to everyone that means belonging to a group. So this is all about classification. Let us move on to what is the basis of classification now. Now, how we are classifying the organisms, that is, what are the basis of classification? Now, the first one is the presence or absence of membrane bound nucleus. So this is the basis of classification. That is, this is the basic uh, characteristic of uh, classification. That is, all eukaryotic uh, animals, they are having membrane bound organelles, whereas uh, such as they are having nucleus, they are having uh, cell organelles, but all the prokaryotes, they do not have this. So this helps in classification of different organisms. That is presence or absence of membrane bound nucleus. Now next we come to occurrence of cells singly or in groups that is unicellular or multicellular. So if we are taking this topic we can say that uh, some cells want to live singly that is they are unicellular while some other they want to live in groups they are multicellular. Now some cells such as amoeba they live singly while some cells they group together to form an individual as a result you can see many many differences in the body and design of single celled organelles okay now such as amoeba is a single celled organelle and there are multicellular organelles like worms or humans so we can say that unicellular we can write amoeba as the unicellular one and we can say multicellular like humans and other animals humans etc and other animals they are multicellular now what is next comes that is mode of food procurement so what is that either they are autotrophs or they are heterotrophs so what does this uh, it, it mean so what is the mode of uh, procurement that is do the organisms make their own food are they autotrophs or they are depending on the food uh, for uh, on others for their food that is they are heterotrophs 
So what is the level of organization in the um, organisms that performs photosynthesis in which or they are not performing? So on that basis also we are dividing them uh, in, and we are classifying them into different categories. Now in animals we can see that they are all heterotrophs only and they are depending on others for their food. Now there are several organs which are specialized for performing different functions in animals as well as plants. So in the above questions in these uh, uh, three parts we can say that these are the main basis of classification. Now we should know that why we are classifying plants and animals and what is the exact importance of classification in our day to day uh, basis or in our daily life. Why we are classifying all these animals. So let us move on to that one. Now if when we come to this we can say the importance of classification. What is that? It is making the study easier for a wide range of organisms on earth. Now it helps us in understanding the evolutionary relationship between different group of organisms. Is it clear? So there are different groups of organisms and it is uh, it is making helping us to uh, understand the evolutionary relationship between different group of organisms. Now it is helping in identification in classification of different organisms such as agricultural pests, pathogen components of an ecosystem on which various fields of applied sciences are depending such as agriculture, public health and environmental biology depends on this uh, several identification and classification of different organisms. Now another one is that this, this first three we know but this last one is what it is helping in understanding the characteristics of the whole group of organisms by studying only a few animals. So when we are studying a few representative of that group then only we come to understand that how the whole group will look like or what are the characteristics. If you identify like one animal or one uh, plant of that group only we will be knowing that all the plants lying in the same group are having almost the same characteristics, uh, same features and same uh, uh, what to say same identifying characters in each. So this is all about the importance of classification which is very important for uh, different studies, field of studies like applied sciences, agriculture, public health and environmental uh, biology also. So let us see what is there in the next video. Now here we are going to see the hierarchy in the classification of groups. So there according there is a sequence that is the hierarchy in the classification of groups. So what is the sequence? First is the kingdom. Then comes the phylum, then comes the class, order, family, genus and species. So this is a bit difficult to uh, remember for you all. So I have made a uh, like a sentence uh, in, which includes the first word. If you are um, taking from each and every uh, word, then it will make this hierarchy. So it's not uh, such a meaningful sentence that I, I have made, but I have tried my best to make it in a lucid manner. So what is the statement that is king played chess? King played chess, king played chess opposing, king played chess opposing 40 group soldiers, king played chess opposing 40 group soldiers. So if you are taking the first word from each what it will uh, uh, represent king that is kingdom, played P that is phylum, next comes C from chess that is class. Next uh, O that is O it is coming for order, F for family, G for genus and S for species. So if you learn this sentence that is king played chess opposing 40 group soldiers. Thus if you memorize this statement king played chess opposing 40 group soldiers. So if you are memorizing this. Uh, instead of kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species which is a bit difficult to recall. So recalling wise this statement is very easy. King played chess opposing 40 group soldiers. So if you are uh, learning this then while writing if you recall the first alphabet of each word that is king K played P chess C opposing O 40 F group G and soldiers then you will get the full hierarchy correct. So this is the hierarchy and you just uh, learn this statement. So this is I have tried my best to make it in a lucid statement and I think you will like it and just memorize this for the benefit of learning this hierarchy of classification. Now let us move on to the hierarchy.
Now we are starting from the lowermost thing that is the species is the lowermost. So we will be moving up from the species to the kingdom above. So species, this is the lowermost one. So this species is the lowermost one. It is the lowermost category as the species. Now each organism is classified into species and it is the basic unit of classification. Now we all know that members of the same species often resemble each other in appearance but not exactly similar. So they are resembling each other but they are not perfectly or exactly similar to each other. Like tigers belong to the species tigris and humans belong to the species sapiens. So these are the species. This tiger, tigris is the species whereas in humans or sapiens is the species name. Now apart from small variations, members of species are almost identical in their anatomy, physiology and behavior. So apart from very few differences or variations, the members of each species, we can say they are identical in their anatomy, physiological uh, body structure as well as their behavior. Now let us move on to the next order that is the genus. Now genus when it comes to the next order that is the next higher order above the species that is they are also closely related resembling each other and are grouped into the next higher category the genus and the plural is called the genera. Now genus is a group of species which have external resemblance of characters. Now we can say that panthera leo that is leopard and panthera pardus uh, sorry panthera leo the lion panthera pardus that is the leopard and the tiger that is panthera tri tigris they are having externally some resemblance now are they are all different species but belong to the same genus panthera so the genus is same panthera in this three panthera tigris panthera pardus and panthera leo but they are having different species though the genus is same that is the panthera but the species are different tigris pardus and leo so is it clear to everyone it is very easy just their genus is same panthera but the species is different that is for panthera tigris it is tigris for leopard it is pardus and for a lion it is leo and these species they are having several external resemblance so their external features uh, they are almost uh, many features are similar they resemble each other so let us move on to the next one now next here comes the family now after species we have told about genus and next comes the family in the order so next hierarchy is the family now these groups are similar genera with common characteristics are grouped together into a family so they are having a similar genera with a common characteristic and they are grouped under this uh, family now how we can see that example cat is Felis domestica and tigera, tiger is panthera tigris. Okay so cat is Felis domestica and the tiger is panthera tigris. Now they belong to the same family that is Felidae. The family name is same this is the family. So that is uh, the same family name that is Felidae. Is it clear? So they belong to the same family Felidae but they are having uh, groups uh, similar genera and the common characteristics are grouped together in a family so let us move on to the next one now next comes the order that is similar families are they are grouped together into orders so we all know that it is we are going from the uh, bottom of the hierarchy to the above one that is species genus we have completed family now we have come to order so this order they are similar families which are grouped together into orders and like we can say that humans and apes are grouped together into the same order as primates we as well as the apes we are under the same order called the uh, primates so this primates is the order this primates is the order and we are under the same order of primates now next we will move on to the class now when we come to class similar orders are grouped into classes now similar orders are always grouped into classes so we belong to the class mammalia so we also know the different classes like amphibia and all we will be studying in the uh, next part so we are belonging to the class mammalia so orders similar orders are placed in uh, say the different grouped as different classes so similar orders are grouped into classes and example like uh, amphibia reptilia mammalia so these are all classes 
So same type of orders are placed under different classes. Is it clear to everyone? Now we move on to phylum. So what is it is the next higher level of classification. It is just below the kingdom and it is above the class. So it is below the kingdom and it is above the class where we are comprising what we are comprising fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds with mammals. They constitute the phylum. So there are different categories or of animals which are comprising the whole phylum. That is fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals which constitute the phylum. Now in case of plants, we can say that classes of few similar characters are assigned in division. Okay, is it clear? So uh, few uh, plants, uh, few similar characteristics, they are assigned under division. So they in plants, we are not telling that this plant is under certain phylum. We are telling that it is under a certain division. Okay, is it clear? So animals, we will tell them phylum, but plants, when it comes to plants, it will be, it will be considered as division. Okay, now we will move on to the last one of this hierarchy, that is the kingdom. Now, when we come to this kingdom, the largest group of organisms, or uh, as recognized by all the biologists, is the kingdom. Now, first Aristotle he divided the uh, Organisms under two categories that is plants kingdom plantae and animals kingdom animalia. But uh, this didn't make the classification very much clear. We didn't know about what was their mode of nutrition. They were unicellular or not. They were having a nucleus uh, cell bound organelles or not. So we were just uh, dividing it into two categories that is plants and animals. So it was not at all a clear classification. So what happened after him came R.H. Whitaker. So R.H. Whitaker comprised this uh, kingdom classification into five kingdom classification. So that we are going to study in the next part. Here we will know that he classified them into five kingdom classification on the basis of a few things. So what was that presence or absence of nucleus? He told about on the body organization also body organization also uh, uh, helped to uh, classify the organisms and the mode of nutrition also helps to classify the organisms under this five kingdom classification. Now here we are going to discuss about nomenclature. So what is this term nomenclature means? This term means that naming scientific naming of certain organisms. So uh, there are several uh, all the all the organisms they are having a scientific name. So what is a naming an organism that is a simplified system of naming organisms is called binomial nomenclature and it was proposed by Carl Linnaeus in between the year 1707 to 1778 so why is it called binomial nomenclature so all our scientific names are having two parts so that is why it is called binomial nomenclature or two name naming system is it clear now the first part of the naming system what is it uh, having it is having the genus name and the second part is having the species name the first part is having the genus name and the second part is having the species name. Now, here we can say that this scientific name of mango is Magnifera indica. So the first part is the genus Magnifera and the second part is the species that is the indica. Now, if we take our uh, human being scientific name that is Homo sapiens. So Homo sapiens, if we are taking, then it is the first part is the genus name and the second part sapiens is the species name. Now, there are several important points how this scientific name should be written. Now, when we are typing this scientific name, we are writing it always in italics. But when we are writing it, it is not possible for us uh, while writing to write that part in italics. So what we are doing, we are underlining each part separately. Like if we are writing Homo sapiens, we will underline Homo separately and sapiens separately. Now we should remember that the first alphabet of the genus will be in capital whereas the first alphabet of species should be in small always. So these are the important things which we should remember or we should keep in our mind while writing the scientific name. Now if you are not writing or following this scientific name writing pattern it will be a mistake for you all. So marks will be deducted in your exams and you will not get to know why the marks are deducted. So these are the basics. So please try to make it clear. Now generally these names are either Greek or Latin and they are accepted throughout the world. So these names, this binomial nomenclature system is accepted throughout the world and they are universally accepted 
and written in the same manner and in the same pattern. So the first part is the genus and the second part is the species. So in this episode, we have already discussed about the uh, basic introduction of classification, nomenclature and the hierarchy of the classification of groups. So in the next video, I'll be coming up with the five kingdom classification that is kingdom monera, protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. So five kingdom classification in the next episode, I'll come up with that. Now this is a uh, this uh, lesson will be a little bit in uh, different parts like four or five episodes of this lesson will come because this diversity of living world is a bit vast topic. We will break it into different episodes and we'll learn. So still then uh, stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and share my videos and please write the comment in my comment box so that I can get to know what queries or doubts you are having. Okay, thank you.